Hello, welcome to part 23 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our question number 111. A male elderly who had recent total knee replacement is ordered an assistive device that aims to help him with his balance and walking. Which of the following ambulatory devices can give the patient the most stability? Option A, cord cane. Option B, walker standard. Option C, forearm crutches. Option D, knee support crutches. And the answer is Option B, walker standard. Explanation to this question is a walker with four solid prongs gives the most stability. This ambulatory assistive device is considered for patients who had total knee replacement or have a significant impairment with balance and walking. Walker are usually recommended to patients with good upper limb strength. Now let's move to question number 112. The therapist is treating a 52-year-old woman after right total hip replacement. The patient complains of being self-conscious about a limb. She carries a heavy briefcase to and from work every day. The therapist notes a tendalbunk gait during ambulation on the level surface. What advice can the therapist give the patient to minimize the gait deviation? Option A. Carry the briefcase in the right hand. Option B. Carry the briefcase in the left hand. Option C. The patient should not carry a briefcase at all. Option D. It does not matter in which hand a briefcase is carried. And the answer is Option A. Carry the briefcase in the right hand. Explanation to this question is the briefcase should be carried in the right hand. Carrying the briefcase in the left hand would increase the amount of force that the right gluteus medius would have to exert to minimum a stable pelvis during the gait. Now let's move to question number 113. You are treating a patient who has had a left side CVA approximately 6 weeks ago. The patient requires assistance in plantar flexion of the angle during the push-off phase of the gait. Which of the following places would be the most appropriate in planning this patient's treatment program? Option A. Dorsiplantar flexion assist. Option B. Dorsiflexion assist. Option C. Dorsiflexion stop. Option D. Free motion angle joint. And the answer is Option A. Dorsiplantar flexion assist. Explanation to this question is Dorsi plantar flexion assist angle brace aid in plantar flexion of the angle and during the push off phase of gait. Dorsi flexion assist aids in dorsi flexion during swing phase. Dorsi flexion stop resists the dorsi flexion and allow free range of motion in plantar flexion. With free motion angle joint, there is no restriction on the angle movements. Now let's move to question number 114. While obtaining the history from a 62-year-old woman weighing 147 pounds, the therapist discussed that the patient has a history of rheumatoid arthritis. The order for outpatient physical therapy includes continuous traction due to L2 disc protrusion. What is the best course of action for the therapist? Option A. Follow the order. Option B. Consult the physician because rheumatoid arthritis is contraindication. Option C. Apply intermittent instead of continuous traction. Option D. Use continuous traction with weight setting at 110 pounds. And the answer is Option B. Consult the physician because rheumatoid arthritis is a contraindication. Explanation to this question is Answer A and C are incorrect because rheumatoid arthritis is contraindication for continuous or intermittent traction. Answer D is incorrect for the above reason as well as the fact that 110 pound setting is too great for 147 pound patient. Now let's move to question number 115. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation is one of the most commonly used form of electroanalgesia. Which of the following therapeutic method of TENS is most recommended for acupuncture-like setting? Option A. High stimulation frequency and low intensity just above the threshold current is set to between 10 and 30 MA. Option B. Low stimulation frequency and high stimulus intensity close to tolerance level of the patient. Option C. Low intensity stimuli firing in high frequency burst. 
option d frequency of each burst is 1 to 2 hertz and the frequency of impulse with each burst is 100 hertz and the answer is option b low stimulation frequency and high stimulus intensity close to tolerance level of the patient explanation to this question is in acupuncture like setting the therapeutic method of tens usually involve low frequency stimulus from 1 to 10 hertz at high stimulus intensity option a describes conventional tens option c and d refers to pulse tens so that's all for today if you need further clarification check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box if you like this mcq session do subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you